Hello and welcome back to Automotive Tales. On today's episode, we have got a VW T6 Caravelle. So we are out skiing in Sweden. So yes, this attire is entirely necessary because it's cold. Uh, and we've got uh, a hire vehicle, which is a nine seater. I think it's a 2001 Caravelle. Um, so that's the basically the people carrier version of the transporter. So three seats across the front like a van. And then the second row is three seats. And the row behind that is also three seats. But it also still has a sizable boot. So we got four very large cases, a stack of skis and a load of food for the week in the chalet, all in the back of one vehicle. So first impressions. Uh, it's a very nice car. It's lovely appointed interior. Uh, very, very Volkswagen, your kind of standard attire, same switch gear and same steering wheel as you get on a more modern vehicle. Uh, your standard touchscreen infotainment stuff, which we'll come on to. Um, but some nice features, like it has actual manual controls and buttons for things like the heated seats, which are very important in Sweden, uh, and your heat controls for your blowers, etc., etc. So obviously it's a high vehicle, so it's a fairly poverty spec, but even so it still comes with all the usual accoutrements like uh, cruise control, uh, speed limiters. And this one has a strange, has a DSG gearbox. It's not a manual as I would have expected. Now I've never driven a DSG before and this has taken some getting used to. Uh, at first we thought it was an automatic, but it, it's not. The DSG is really very, very different. So I believe it's a, it's a twin clutch manual, uh, automated manual rather than uh, an automatic which definitely shows you can't use the uh, the torque converter like you would an automatic to kind of creep forward you can feel the clutches engaging and disengaging which is a little bit tricky if you're just kind of rolling along uh, and it doesn't seem to like the hills very much so there's lots of very slow moving up sort of icy snowy roads uh, up steep hills here in Sweden and uh, there's a distinct whiff of clutch when you get out of it even though you've only got two pedals a stop and a go pedal um, interesting things though that I've discovered with the DSG, I believe the vehicle has an inclinometer. So when you are traveling downhill, uh, it will drop into neutral, so it will coast. But if you touch the brakes, it will engage the gearbox again, and then it will go down a gear or two until it starts to give you some engine braking. So it starts to slow the vehicle down without needing the brakes, which is quite a nice touch when you don't want to be really dabbing on the brakes too hard in icy conditions. So good effort Volkswagen, that's a cool little feature. It is, however, a little bit lazy. So when you want some acceleration, there's no torque. It's a small, I think it's a, a 1 or 1 1.3 litre diesel with a whopping great big turbo on it, which means if you want to just accelerate very slowly, um, it isn't going to happen. There is no torque whatsoever. So you've got to really push hard on the accelerator, tell it you want a demand for power. It'll go up a gear or two into the into the boost range and give you some power rather than torque. So uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to. But uh, otherwise, it's quite a nice thing to try. So what things are there to tell you about the Caravelle? Well, you've got a sliding door, which you can see in the back here, uh, and then just two open doors at the front and your normal van doors at the back. Um, so access to the back is all through that sliding door, which is fairly practical. Um, but pff, what else to tell you about it? Oh, yeah. So some strange things on this Volkswagen. The first thing, I've never seen a vehicle before, and I guess this is the, the future, um, that has USB outlets that are not this type of USB, the original kind of USB-A, I think that is. Um, but actually, it's got USB-C outlets. So you need something, if your phone uses USB-C like this, it goes USB-C to USB-C, um, which is, is slightly unusual, but I believe is, is what the future holds for us. So it's quite up to date in that respect. But yeah, another strange thing on this Volkswagen is it has a smoker's pack. So just in front of me here, in the cup holder, there is an ashtray. That's right, this is an actual ashtray, and we have a uh, cigarette lighter. This is something I haven't seen for, for yonks in a new car. Obviously, you get them a lot in older cars, but now it's something you have to option as an extra. So it has a 12-volt outlet, or cigarette lighter socket, as they used to be known, with an actual cigarette lighter in it. But it has also got the USB-C outlets as well. Also, just discovered, there's another power socket on top of the dashboard up here. I presume that's designed for sat-navs and things. That's pretty cool. 
Uh, other cool little things, so you can probably see above me here, there are some lights for the rear, but also some control for the air conditioning, so you can have separate air conditioning in the back, which is quite nice when you've got a group of people, uh, you might want some sort of different temperatures in the back to up front, uh, especially because uh, in the front you have heated seats. There's also this kind of aircraft style centre console in the roof as well. Departure time, not quite sure what that's all about. I guess if you're using it as a taxi, you can put a time on there. It's all a bit interesting. If you know what this is all about, uh, bleep bloop in the comments below. So the infotainment system, what is there to say about this? Well, you've got your standard touch screen arrangement here. Um, it's a bit of a compromise. It doesn't have a huge screen like some cars have, uh, and it still has got manual buttons, so you can turn the volume up and down when you're driving without fiddling around in the touch menu. And we've got proper controls for things like the heated seats. These heated seats are rather amazing. They have three settings. They have sort of mildly warm, they have ooh, nice and toasty, and then they have like nuclear. They, they, they are so hot, it's almost better than sitting in a sauna, which is quite a thing when you're in Sweden. So uh, good effort, Volkswagen, decent heated seats, like properly hot, hot seats. And your sort of cabin controls for temperatures, screen clearing, etc., and a separate readout for the temperatures so that it's not in here, which is quite a nice feature in a modern vehicle that, that remains separate. I suspect these slowly will get faded out as everything ends up under glass, but I quite like this compromise. The screen is big enough to see for the navigation, um, but it's also uh, got enough buttons that you can do things without fiddling with the screen while you're driving. So another cool feature in the centre of the dashboard here, you've got this little display panel that tells you what direction you are travelling. Not so useful in most countries, but certainly out here in the middle of nowhere in Sweden, that can be surprisingly useful. And then the rest is kind of standard affair, Volkswagen, uh, you know, usual steering controls for your uh, cruise control and the volume controls, etc. So nothing really too out there. So another cool feature that I guess is common in Scandinavian countries, but probably isn't for us in the wider Europe or in the UK, is there's an extra fob with the keys. So here's your standard fob, uh, which you'll note has a key. This is not a keyless start, which is unusual given the other tech that the vehicle has got. Um, but it has this extra fob, which is to cold start the vehicle. So while you are still in your chalet, you can start the vehicle up to warm the car and the engine through. So when you get in, it's not all covered in ice, which is quite a nice little feature. Even though Eurocar or Europe car still give you ice scrapers and a strange accessory that comes with higher cars over here, a brush. That's not for, you know, brushing the floors out. That's actually for getting snow off the screen and off the top. So you don't have snow flying off while you're driving along. Um, but yeah, that's an unusual feature. I don't think you would see in most of the rest of Europe, but you definitely see it up here in Scandinavia. So yeah, I'd, if you know this is something you get available, or if you optioned this on a car in the UK, I'd love to know about it and love to know why. why. Why would you have optioned this if you weren't in Scandinavia? So, uh, last thoughts on the VW Caravelle. We have done 1,550 kilometres, and it's been okay. The gutlessness is frankly dangerous when pulling out in traffic. And there's a strange issue with the pedal orientation, which means on one occasion I got my foot stuck under the brake pedal, which is a little terrifying. But uh, otherwise, it's kind of much of a muchness, and it, it is a higher car after all. So I'm sure you can get it with a more powerful engine than the... Uh, the TD150, which it desperately needs. So that is all for this chilly episode of Automotive Tales. I hope you found that interesting. Uh, a little run round of a Volkswagen T6 in and amongst all the buzz about the new Volkswagen ID buzz, which I guess is the electric equivalent of this. So uh, that's all for me. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and we will see you next time.